If the accepted wisdom once was, what's good for General Motors is good for the country, nobody has said that in a long, long time, and especially this week. But before you get through watching this next story, it may strike you that what's good for Lincoln Electric is good for the country. Lincoln Electric? A company in America's Rust Belt? Yep, Lincoln Electric, a company in America's Rust Belt. This is the Lincoln Electric Company of Cleveland, Ohio, a Fortune 500 company with over $800 million in sales, the world's leading manufacturer of welding machines. You ever stop to eat lunch? <laughs> no, 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 no. You, you work hard here, yeah. You definitely put a full eight-hour day in, but uh, for the rewards you get from putting in that full eight-hour day, it far outweighs any 15-minute break you could want. While other factories around Cleveland have closed left and right, the 2,000 workers in Lincoln's noisy, 60-year-old, non-union plant aren't just surviving, they're prospering. What are the rewards? You get that big chunk of money. I mean, I, I've been married five years, I've got a house, I got two cars. Every year I, last year we remodeled our, our bathroom, the year before it was the bedroom. You know, I mean, you're putting all these hours, but the money gets so incredible. How incredible does the money get? Well, Lincoln simply claims to have the highest paid factory workers in the world. How much Enough. did you make? Will you tell us? <laughs> I've had years up to $85,000. $85,000? Mm -hmm. They've been higher in past years with higher overtime, but there, there is a recession on right now. Lincoln's president, Don Hastings, says not everyone makes that. The average pay is around $45,000. But every worker does get the same promise a job for life. We guarantee them employment, and uh, we haven't had a layoff in many, many, many years, even during very drastic downturns. Uh, in 1982 and 1983, we saw a 40% reduction in our sales volume, yet we kept all of our people employed. You know, it's, it almost sounds too good to be true. There's got to be a catch. There I mean, isn't. there's not a catch? There's no catch at all. High pay, even in a recession, and never a layoff? How do they do it? They do it with something called piecework. While most American factory workers earn an hourly wage, people at Lincoln are paid only for what they produce, every rod or wire or welder. That may explain the sign at the front door, probably the only such sign in any American factory, telling workers not to come in more than 30 minutes early. You know, you're on your own. You know, whatever whatever you can do is what you make. I mean, it's up to you. And if you want to work, you can make it here. If you don't, I suggest not coming. Piecework makes many people think of sweatshops, of garment workers and migrant workers exploited by greedy owners. Unions fought against piecework for decades, but you won't find them apologizing for it at Lincoln Electric. People are kind of like on a high wire without a net, and they only get paid if they make good product, and they get paid for just what they do. It's a system that uh, some people think might be a little bit on the barbaric side, but it works. Well, you used the word barbaric. It was your word. It was mine. Um, and you said it's a high wire with no safety net. Uh, is that really the direction that the American workplace should be aiming toward? Oh, definitely. To just get paid for what you negotiate does, and not what, for what you produce doesn't make any sense to us at all. Do you wish that there were a union here? No. no. Why not? I don't want to be on strike. I got a family to support. Now, if you're older and you work in a union, uh, then you get a, you, you get a better break from seniority. Here, you don't. No, we don't, we don't have any seniority. And you accept that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I accept it. We don't go on strike. We always have a job. We're always working. And they guarantee you a job? Oh, yeah. I'm guaranteed employment for the rest of my life. Another thing Lincoln guarantees, an annual bonus. Not just your run-of-the-mill extra check at Christmas. At Lincoln, most of the year's profit goes into the bonus. Now, what was the total bonus pool last year? I believe it was just over $48 million to about 2,650 employees. But that 48 million was by no means divided evenly. 
because before the bonus, Lincoln gave everyone a report card grading everything from attendance to cooperation. A worker with bad grades got only a few thousand, while the top bonus earner, the straight A worker, got $37,000. That's on top of his regular pay. After you get a few bonuses, you kind of get hot. The money's kind of nice. That's what we heard from lots of Lincoln workers. They may not love their jobs, but they love the money they make. I probably fulfilled my, my dreams by working here. In and terms I've been of able money? To send a couple kids through college and I have a home and things. Give me ballpark about your salary so that the public... I, I probably make $50,000 a year. You're in and you're out. Steady as she over, goes. Over the last several years, yes. What's the best thing about it? Be honest, the bonus. <laughs> money, money, money. Yeah, money, money. So that's all. I mean, it's the money. That's, the, that's it. These new books being written today and saying uh, job satisfaction and happy workers uh, doing exercises or singing company songs as they do in Japan. Uh, you know, it's just... Baloney. Baloney. That's exactly the term. <laughs> uh, they come in here because they want to earn a good living. And they'd probably go right back out if not for the money, because Lincoln can also be a very unforgiving place. Lots of new hires can't take it. 20% leave within three months. If older workers slow down, tough luck. Their pay drops. And while the company does provide a pension plan and a two-week paid vacation, employees pay for all their own health insurance. What happens if you get sick? You come to work. You come to work. <laughs> because if you don't, you don't get paid. Right, right. So you come even if you're sick. Most of the time, yeah. There are no sick days, right? That's right. If you're sick, you don't get paid for that day. That's right. What about holidays? Um, same thing. What? Uh, no pay. It's no pay so, for Christmas? No. No. Lincoln is a place that you would not want to work. Dan Lacey publishes a newsletter called Workplace Trends in an office just a few miles across Cleveland from Lincoln Electric. Lacey has spent his career analyzing American workers and working conditions. And he doesn't buy Don Hastings' idea that the Lincoln way is the wave of the future. The Lincoln system is one based on fast. You go, 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 go. The problem to that in the big picture is that that system, if it were to be spread across America, would throw us back into the 19th century. We would go back to the worst days of the Industrial Revolution. It's based on competition, individuality, right. and so forth. Right. Isn't that just exactly what we need in our work ethic in America today? Conceptually, we need that. We need pay for performance. We need a little more drive. But a lot Lincoln, more drive. Well, OK, a lot more drive. But Lincoln is not the way to implement it. That's like saying, we have to improve transportation in America, so let's whip the horses a little harder. You know what I mean? That's a 19th century way of getting around. I've heard those arguments. But the sweatshops uh, never paid people. We don't force anybody to do anything. We just lay it open. You can do what you want to do. In other words, if you want to make more, it's there as an opportunity, and we'll pay you. It's a very interesting argument that's brought up. Is, there, is Lincoln behind the times or ahead of the times? Norman Berg, a professor at the Harvard Business School who's been teaching a case study of Lincoln Electric for nearly 20 years, thinks American industry can learn something in Cleveland. They have tried, I think, to make it a collection of entrepreneurs. You have your job area. You have a lot of freedom in how you organize it. If you do well, you get paid very well. If you can get your employees to feel that their interests truly are aligned with those of the company, I think that's a very big part of the secret. You know, that's not very, very complicated. I mean, it may, no, no, it makes it's so much sense. It's not complicated to say, but it's very complicated to do over a period of time. It's not that complicated at Lincoln. The idea is that the company's profits will be shared fairly. We pay for performance at the worker level, and we do the same thing at the executive level. Don Hastings made just over $300,000 last year, pretty modest by CEO standards. More important, because 1991 was a recession year for Lincoln, it was $60,000 less than he'd made the year before. And if the, we don't are performing as a company, the executive pay goes down uh, 
exactly as if we had cut back hours on the production floor so that everybody's in this together. I didn't see an executive dining room either. No, you didn't. You won't see any corporate jets. You don't see any mountain retreats. You won't see any executive cars. Now try that at Chrysler or Coca-Cola. But is it really real at Lincoln? We sat Don Hastings down with some of his workers to try and find out. What does it say to a worker? If, if the, let's say Mr. Hastings, like the head of Coca-Cola, got $86 million last year. <laughs> No, if Mr. Hastings made 80, 86 million dollars, that'd be fine if I made 80 million with him. But he doesn't. And, and what we do, we have everything priced directly that we can all respect each other. What is the motivation right. to, for an executive to tell us to work harder if my pay stays the same? There is no motivation. Ours is that if we get more efficient and we have better years, then I'm going to make more money. Can other companies like GM and Chrysler some of the other big manufacturing companies adopt this style? Or is this a place where only what I would call type A people, like all of you, pushers, uh, workaholics, can work? I think there's too, too radical of a change to go to something like this. Maybe starting up small, you could adopt this type of an idea. But like a GM, I don't know if they're already too, too far into what they do now. I've been doing it too so long. Different. Yeah, they've been doing it too long. You'd need a total change in management philosophy right. and, uh, and the ability philosophy. to yeah. for the management and workers to totally cooperate. Uh, it's possible. Yes, yeah, anything's company. possible, it, but it would take a tremendous commitment from both management and labor. Lincoln's management is almost evangelical, preaching their system to anyone who listens. Don Hastings goes so far as to claim that big chunks of what people call the Japanese system actually came from his factory in Cleveland. And he says if it can only become the American system, we'll all hear a lot less about how American industry can't compete. High pay for the workers, guaranteed jobs, no layoffs. Uh, this company's in the Rust Belt where most companies are failing and this company is soaring. What's not to like? Many of these promises that they're making are promises that they can't keep. If you went back 10 years ago, IBM was promising lifetime job security. Now they're cutting tens of thousands of people. That's a, that's a promise that's easy to make and easy to break. Why, why won't that happen to Lincoln? I mean, why won't Lincoln go the way of IBM? It could. It could. Nobody can guarantee that. But uh, if I were to pick a uh, single company to bet on 20 or 30, 40 years from now, I think I would be inclined to put my money on Lincoln. Dan Lacey, one of the people who helped us report this story, died before he could see it on the air.